Hey guys, today I'm going to be painting Drago from the World of Smog, Rise of Moloch. Now this is the first miniature painting of several that I'll be doing for this game. I'm actually pretty excited to get this to the table. I haven't quite yet, but I fully plan to. I was a big fan of Descent, and as a one versus mini game, this is right up my alley. Now I will say that I did ask you guys what I was going to paint first, and the general consensus was Walther was a good choice, and I agree. However, I needed some paints for him that I didn't quite have, and this one is pretty mild on paints, and so I had all of them available, so I will do him first, followed by Walther, so expect him soon. Okay, starting as always with the kind of prep work for the miniature, uh, so this is just kind of the trimming of mold lines and I did find that there was actually quite a bit here but again they're they're in really easy and accessible areas and um, they're not too hard to get at um, even the ones kind of over texture were pretty mild there was a major one on his arm the one facing up right now uh, you just saw the big piece kind of plop off onto my table and you'll see other bits uh, just kind of fly around as well again quite a bit of mold line but it's a softer plastic for these miniatures, and so it's really, really easy to scrape down. And uh, I, I've noticed at least a lot of the miniatures seem rather sculpted in their design, uh, just how their texture is, how uh, how their their just their general aesthetic looks kind of sculpted. And so you don't have to be super, you know, uh, worried about creating it super smooth like uh, Stuffed Fables for instance where everything was perfectly round. This is not the case at all. These are very organic in that sense. Okay, as always, I am priming my miniatures. It's just in gray, and so it's not quite as noticeable. And we're starting out with Mechanicus Standard Gray, which is kind of a, a darker gray, but not super dark. Now, you noticed me pause there real quick. I am using some new magnifying glasses that made me look really cool. Uh, you know, I'll post it up here, and there will be a link to it in the description below. It's actually like 14 bucks. It's pretty cheap. Uh, comes with a lot of magnifications. Um, I can see this being helpful for a normal painting. The real reason I got it though is because uh, to get an angled shot like this and not one kind of to the side, which you'll see a lot of a lot of painters do just because it's easier, is to have a tripod sitting in front of your face with a camera, which means I'm sitting behind that. Uh, not only does it make me have to reach around and it, it's not quite as comfortable, but I'm farther away from the miniature. And uh, it's kind of a strain on the eyes, so I'm hoping this will help a little bit. Maybe you can be the judge of that. Uh, either way, I think they're they're pretty nice so far. I've only used it on this miniature. Uh, the change in depth perception is kind of odd. Uh, when you look at something else, your eyes have to refocus every time. Kind of weird, but uh, it didn't disorientate me, which is good. But as for painting this, actually, uh, it's all rather simple. I mean, he's, well, you know, at least half of him is this gray. Now, I am using a brush that's pretty much on its dying end here, but considering this is a first base coat and I don't really have to be too careful, I'm not too worried about not having a good tip. Uh, eventually I will give up and replace it with a brand new one, and I'll kind of show you the difference there, at least on my regiment brush. This is the character brush, and it's even worse, but I had to, you know, or order that one. It doesn't come in the, the set that I normally buy, so it wasn't quite available at the time of filming. So honestly, when you're painting this first set, if you really didn't care, you could just glob it pretty much everywhere in, in, in the sense that you're going to be painting over everything and nothing is super bright. His shirt is kind of bright, but again, I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Don't don't worry if you get a little bit on these straps. I avoid them. I, I don't find it a big hassle to avoid them, but uh, if you just wanted to paint over those chest straps right there, you, you're more than welcome to. Okay, and moving on to a dry brush of Administratum Gray. Now this is going to be a fairly heavy dry brush, not in the fact that I have a lot of 
paint on my brush, but that I'm gonna go at every single angle. I'm gonna go all over this miniature, um, and it, it's gonna get quite a bit of this. I wanted it a good mix here. I am not going to highlight him by hand. You could, you always can. Um, I wouldn't suggest it. With fur, it's typically not worth the effort. Um, unless you're trying to mi maybe do like a wet blend or something like that, but just raw highlights, that would be painstakingly uh, time-consuming, and you wouldn't get much of a different uh, effect here. And, uh, you know, even if there are some, some harshness here, I'm gonna put some uh, dark wash on it anyway, and so it's not a big deal. And again, when dry brushing, this is the only color on here right now, so go ahead and dry brush to your heart's content. It doesn't matter if you get a little bit on the other parts of the miniature right now. Now you will notice when I do the feet, it's a little bit heavy-handed. Again, I'm going to darken the feet more than the other parts um, as a design choice and because I, I feel it's more skin and not fur and it, it's kind of like that in the concept art on, as well, so I'm fine with them being kind of drastic right now. Okay, moving on to an actual color. This is Flat Earth. Now I chose this because it's... You know, it, it says earth, and a lot of times that's a brown, and this is a brown, but it's a very kind of orangey, you know, almost yellowish kind of brown uh, that I think is matches the concept art really well. I'm not going to draw those lines, by the way, from the concept art, but um, it, it's also just a nice splash of color because his shirt uh, with the wash I'm going to use is also kind of in this kind of warm color range. So it, it complements, but it's much starker here, which I think is kind of nice. Okay, now here I'm going to slow this down. I, I feel I should probably go over this. This is a very typical scenario. You'll see belts, you'll see straps, you'll see all sorts of little fine details like this over something you've already painted. So this is how I do it. I'm not a professional painter, so I don't pretend to teach the correct way. This is really just how I do it, and I, I manage, and if I can do it, trust me, you can. Um, so I'm just kind of gliding my brush on there. I, I have a pretty good point on this, and I'm taking my time. This is all real time, so it's as slow as it goes. And then even for that little trim here, you can kind of see how I just kind of wipe it gently on there. You don't want too wet of paint or it'll blob everywhere. You can't control it. Um, but you also don't want too thick of paint because it'll harden as you go slow on the brush, and that'll affect your, your painting as well. So a good consistency of, I don't know, a little bit thicker than maybe coffee creamer. But anyway, yeah, I mean, if you take your time, it'll look just fine, and at this point, you could touch up really easy if you did make a mistake. In fact, I'm going to make a mistake later, and I'm going to show you how I fix it, so don't feel bad if you make mistakes. It, it happens, um, I'd say to the best of us, but I wouldn't be the judge of that. Uh, but it happens to me anyway. Okay, so moving on to highlighting. So I added a little bit of white here. It's really just maybe a tenth of the paint I had. So it's, you know, like nine parts to one part or, you know, something ridiculous like that. Just a little bit. I'm actually going to add a little bit more white later on. And I'm going to show this pretty much in its full. So you can see both the flow that I follow, where I choose to put the lights. By the way, I'm no expert. I'm no art major. I have no idea where the light really should go. I just know where I think it looks good to me anyway uh, so again putting a little bit on the band a little bit on the tops and really w the reason I add these highlights is just to add some definition his pants are fairly plain which is why I didn't use a wash I wouldn't have gone a lot out of here but most of the highlights are on these flat parts anyway um, but it's flat where there's shadow too there's not like a ripple for it to really get into that well so this is gonna be nothing but highlights to kind of add some variation to his pants because they're there they're just subtle N nothing a wash could pull into so I'm just gonna keep turning the miniature around and then I'm gonna loop back through 
now that my paint is pretty much dried on the other end. So this is fairly wet. It's about the same consistency right now as the normal paint. Probably a little bit more water because I added some more water after adding just a tiny bit of white. Um, but it's certainly not really at a huge highlight level. I am just kind of ever so slightly whitening or lightening the paint and then kind of painting over it. And they're pretty big areas here too. Alright, so this is a second coat, and again, this is the exact same uh, paint. I didn't add any more white or anything yet, so this is not really a second uh, highlight. Instead, it's just another layer. But again, all of these paints are semi-translucent, and so as you build up layers, it does get brighter and brighter, even without changing the paint. Okay, so here is my extreme highlight, and this is about as bright as I want to get, and it's much more um, watery here, so I have to be a bit more careful about where I put it. Um, it's, I mean, not a bunch more watery, but, uh, you know, it, 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 it's a little bit. But And so I'm just kind of ever so slightly putting it, notice I'm not covering up all the lightness, so I've now kind of built in and covered less and less area each time. and. Um, with it being so watery, it, it's going to kind of just pull where my where my brush is and kind of fan out just a little bit. And I actually kind of like that because it, it feathers out pretty well. And so again, I'm going to cover it here and you know play around with it. it. It is a little watery, so kind of like a wash, I guess. Um, you don't have to put it this watery. Uh, you could do it a little bit more, but I struggled doing highlights anyway. And so if it's any less watery than this, I'm going to have some hard lines I'm going to regret. Okay, so now we're going to Rackarth Flesh, and this is going to be the base coat for his shirt. Now, the wash I'm going to put on is quite different, so it's going to change color quite a bit, but uh, this is a good base coat for it. Uh, and again, notice I am kind of taking my time, so I'm getting a lot of paint on my brush because I am using a smaller brush, so I'm trying to, I'm actually loading it fairly heavy, but there's a lot of area here where I can plop that down and then move the paint around. And this allows me to kind of do this fine detail without swapping brushes um, or just going very, very slow. This is this is taking long enough with this fine detail, so I'm trying to be, you know, careful, but it, again, you can fix a mess up. It's not terrible. I'll, I'll actually show you that in you know, not too long. Now, I will say one benefit of painting this is my children, my wife, and even a few of my co-workers thought that he, he was pulling his skin instead of his shirt, and they were like, oh, that's gross, that's crazy, you know, that's cool, or whatever. It depended on, you know, who, who said it on what the reaction was to it. but. Uh, uh, I don't know, I, I noticed it was a shirt right away, but uh, perhaps I'd seen some concept art that gave me that inkling beforehand. Either way, it's pretty obvious once it's painted, but when it's all gray, it, I, I could see where they thought it might be his skin. Uh, so that's, you know, one of the benefits there is different colors kind of change the, the, the material and just what that object actually is a lot easier. Okay, so as you can see, I, I did mess up. This is the mess up I was talking about. So real quick, right after that, rinse off my brush, and then I have it pretty wet here, and I'm just trying to keep that paint wet. So first I'm just getting it wet so that it doesn't dry out as much as possible. Then I'm quickly getting my brush and just whisking it in the water, drying it off real quick, and just trying to lap it up with the brush so it naturally kind of soaks up. It takes some time, you gotta play around with it, but as long as you kind of stop what you're doing, and babysit a little bit, you're typically pretty okay. Now again, I could have touched this up. It wouldn't have been too major, uh, especially without a wash, just to build up those highlights again. And I had enough on my wet palette and it stayed wet. 
to where I had all the color ranges available. If you don't, you have to remix. That's a kind of a bummer. So, you know, it, it, it happens. You just kind of have to deal with it. But moving right along, here we are now back in regular painting mode just putting the paint back on I'll kind of touch up down there a little bit because I did mess it up slightly when I was fixing it so there you go that's fixed and I'll just wrap this up Okay, so here's the wash. I'm going to use Reichlin Flesh Shade, and as you can see, you can really see it well in this light color, the kind of red hue it has to it. Um, and that's mainly because it's supposed to be a little warm, because it is a flesh shade, so you add it to a lighter color like this, and this adds kind of that, I don't want to say rosy cheek, but that lifelike look in the flesh, right? And then you kind of paint over and just keep it in its recesses. Now, again, I am using a small brush here, so I'm having to reload it often, but the last thing I want to do is glob a whole bunch on here. Uh, because really, I'm just having this to add definition, especially in the back. There's not quite as much in the front. Uh, the front will have a heavy kind of highlight back to the base coat, but this is going to keep a lot of that texture in there. Just look generally really good. Okay, so here's kind of the brush difference. Bottom one is my old regiment, top one is the new one, and the regiment was actually the best brush I had out of the bit when it came to a point. The other ones were missing hairs and it was bad. And it's all my fault too, they would have lasted a lot longer, though I will say every miniature painting you've seen on here has been painted with these brushes, so they've had a lot of use and a lot of miscare too where I don't clean them right away. So I do have a kind of a shampoo on the uh, in the links below that you can check out that are really great at bringing out a lot of the paint that you wouldn't even realize is there in your brush. Highly recommended and uh, after every paint session you really should be doing that. I should be doing that. As for this base, I'm just covering in the Mechanica Standard Gray. I'm taking a bit of time around the feet just so that, you know, they're I, I don't mess them up too much though it's Mechanica Standard Gray. I'm Mechanica Standard Gray. I'd probably just leave it if I accidentally <laughs> made put a spot on there. Uh, and this is just in case my coverage isn't complete, there, it's not a different color underneath. Okay, now while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and highlight this shirt back up to its base color. Now at first I thought I would just take the paint straight up and paint over it. Um, if you've seen my Ogre Rock Breaker for Massive Darkness video, this looks similar to how I did his skin and I don't want to do that. Um, Again, <laughs> and and so I don't really care for that. Again, I get hard lines. So I had a little bit of water. I did some magic editing there. You probably didn't even notice, uh, or maybe you did. Maybe it's not that magic. Either way, it's a slightly more watery down. It, I'm still basically trying to paint it back to its original color, but that little bit of water just makes it feather out that little bit more and kind of avoid those hard lines, which is really what I'm after here. So I'm not going to paint the recesses, but this isn't necessarily a highlight either. It's mainly just putting it back there, and it's only one coat. 
And again, these are translucent, which means it's not as bright as it was even where I paint. And you can use that to your advantage uh, if you're missing colors or, you know, sometimes I'll pick a color that's brighter than I want, but I know I'm going to add a wash that's going to darken it. And I can kind of envision how that'll look with the wash on it and say, oh, that's actually the color I want. Okay, so moving on with that, I'm going to add entirely too much astro granite onto here. Um, I'm used to the astro granite debris and really layering it up on my massive darkness miniatures. Apparently, this is far too much. I suppose it's like I think my second time using this, so not terrible. But uh, you really, you don't want a whole lot here. The whole point of astro granite is to kind of scrape it on the base and not really pile it up too much. Um, you can, so you kind of have some top topography there and. Uh, some variance in, in how high it is. Also, don't use that Citadel painting holder there. You're not going to be able to get on the edges like you need to. And so I'm being pretty careful here, but it's also not too bad. So there's kind of that scraping you want to do. And so if you have too much, it, it's just going to mess it up. So don't put as much as I did. Now right here, all I'm doing here is just trying to add some texture to it. So I'm trying to move the paint around just to get some good variants, some piles, and some even coats. Okay, nice and slow here. I'm using ivory to paint in the eyes. I'm just giving it a little dab. Um, it doesn't quite cover all of the eye. I'm okay with that. It, uh, these are really tiny. Trust me, what you're seeing on your screen, you could be watching this on a phone that's probably bigger than what it actually is in real life. And this is just stuff to uh, fill in the time as I wait for that stuff to dry. So now, again, I'm painting off camera because I'm cool, but really I'm just using some Rhinox hide on the kind of uh, nose here. That's the word I'm looking for. And that little bit of color, just that little dark brown, does quite a lot. I highly recommend doing that. Okay, so now I have some Nuln Oil. The reason I wanted that to dry in the bottom is because I'm going to add Nuln Oil there too, and I'm only adding Nuln Oil to his tufts of fur here. And so I don't have, a, I'm using my regiment brush, as you can see, but I don't have a whole lot loaded on. I'll do a little bit more when I, I can not, when I don't need to control it as much, but this stuff can really get away from you, so it, take it slow if you need to. So right up here, I notice I'm loading it a bit more because I have more room to play around with it. Um, whereas before I, I needed it exactly there because if it pulls out it is kind of hard to undo um, just because it kind of naturally flows everywhere. Now I'm going to add a little bit at the very end to his nose so I i don't have nearly as much on my brush at that time. I want to do the same technique slightly on his feet but I'll mention that later here. Okay, so with his feet, now wherever you end your brush is typically where the most paint will be, and that's, that's relative for anything, because you, as you lift off, you press down a little bit, and it's just typically that's where it settles, because you're wiping it and then you're stopping. So I'm going top to bottom, which kind of thins this darkness so it gets gradually darker as he gets lower. Now the backs actually do the opposite and lift up, because he has that little tuft there, and I wanted a lot of shadow under there. 
All right, and now I'm just gonna pop a whole bunch onto this base and you'll see the texture just pop out instantly. Even without a dry brush, it just, it adds so much definition to an otherwise kind of gray blob. You can see the texture, but not like this. I mean, you, you can tell right away that there's a lot of texture on that base, which is pretty nice. Okay, and now I'm taking some white gray for the few claws that are showing, and then all of his claws on his feet, and then his teeth, though his teeth are very, very small, and I end up just kind of globbing it in there and having to touch it back up, and then adding a tiny little sliver of teeth later on. Now, I will say while we wait for me to do that, that uh, the the reason I based the heroes this way is because if you look at the map, there's these in-between spots. So you have the kind of the, the base map, and then you have these overlays where, where all the buildings are. And that's what matches really the buildings at all. But everywhere in between all these buildings is kind of this gray, dark, kind of odd textured place, and I think this will fit really well with that. Okay, so back to dry brushing in Minestrom Gray. This is going to be a fairly heavy dry brush. Uh, I don't do multiple colors. Some people will do a kind of a heavy coat of like maybe Minestrom Gray and then maybe add some like white scar to it or, you know, just some kind of brighter color, maybe a bone color, and then just do a lighter dry brush on the tips. I tend to just go heavy with a Minestrom Gray and call it good. You can do either one. And now pure white finally for the base of the rim. Uh, or the rim of the base. Uh, I'm gonna do this for all my heroes. I tend, I did this with Massive Darkness as well, so the heroes are gonna have a white rim uh, just to signify that this, you know, Drago, while he is a monster, he's not one of the bad guys. So, uh, again, I just use kind of the side of the brush and turn him about. Now, I do about three layers, but I'm not gonna show you all the layers. Three to four. Uh, after a while, you're just kind of turning it and turning it and turning it, so you, it's kind of hard to count how many passes you really go, but you will need more than one. Okay, this is the new Purity Seal. This is Minotaurum Varnish. It's just a matte varnish from Citadel. And here is the finished miniature. Guys, this is it. This is him finished. He was actually fairly easy to do. I mean, with the dry brushing and some basic washes, got some good highlights there on the... Uh, well, I think I got some good highlights there on the on the pants because they're nice and, and subtle and not, not too drastic. Anyway, he was a fun one to, to paint. He wasn't my planned first one, but I hope you did enjoy him, and I hope that you look forward to perhaps some more Rise of Moloch miniature paintings. If you do and you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps a lot. If you have a favorite miniature that you would like to see me paint, first of all, realize I only have the base set. And second of all, let me know in the comments below what that is. If you're excited to see more of these and just want some behind the scenes, perhaps you want to end up with a possibility of a painted miniature by me, or if you just want to help support the channel financially, you can go ahead and check my Patreon uh, link down below in the description, and you can go anywhere from a dollar a month upwards depending on what it is you're looking to get out of it. But don't feel any, any obligation to do that. Really, I just enjoyed making this video, enjoyed painting him and showing you, and I hope that you enjoyed it as well. So really, that's it. Can't wait to paint the next one, so expect that early next week. But before that would be another Rising Sun miniature. So look forward to that, and I'll talk to you next time.